and their wonderful shoes and, and the things that you like that get you into debt. But what they don't tell you when you sign the paper is that there's a hope that you won't be able to pay it so that they can take advantage of a bad time that you and I may have as an individual. It's awful when you scrape your money together to put down on an automobile, scrape your money together to put down on a home or something that you have always wanted. You got it now, but you got a note. And most of us as black people are probably one or two paychecks away from absolute poverty. So since we are the last hired and the first fired, the enemy is always in the business of repossession. So when you think you're coming out to go to work, you think somebody stole your car. They just repoed it. And then they tell you how much money you got to have in order to get it back. And if you can't raise it, they have benefited. They got your down payment. They have the money that you paid monthly. And then they resell what they took from you all over again. They don't like to lend money to churches because it don't look nice for a bank to take back your church. <laughs> so they like heavy guarantees. They call it collateral. This building was built by the Greek Orthodox Church. You couldn't replace this building today for $10 million if you understood the material that went into the building of this building, they don't build them like this anymore. They wouldn't give the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a loan to buy it. So Muammar Gaddafi loaned the Honorable Elijah Muhammad nearly four million dollars and he bought this building, I think it was in 1972 or one, somewhere around in there. And Gaddafi was so wonderful, and every month the nation would pay. And the nation did pay off that loan. When the nation fell after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left, this building was abandoned. As beautiful as it is and was, it was abandoned. They used to have uh, parties and dances, and in the beginning, they took out all the seats and they had prayer here, but then the building was abandoned. And I, in rebuilding the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we started, of course, in, in a house, and then we rented little places, and then I 
saw a funeral parlor on 79th Street that was up for sale. It was a bank, then a funeral parlor. And some of you who were with us then, the minister went around speaking and getting honoraria from colleges. And I paid the down payment on that building. And I wouldn't let the Muslims who were with me give any money. I put carpet on the floor, furnished the building, put air conditioning in, because I wanted you all to know that I was not a robber. <laughs> the building is worth maybe about $650,000 today. My name is not on it. Your name. Wait, wait, wait. I never called it a mosque. I just called it the final call administration building because I knew that this was our headquarters. So we went to Imam W.D. Muhammad, who was in the uh, world community of al-Islam at that time, who owned this property with a school next door, and we asked what they would sell it for. And they said a million, about a million two and change. I didn't have a million and two pennies. <laughs> but I'm saying this to all of you who struggle. See, sometimes you move out on faith and if you really believe in what you're doing, God will assist you. Never be afraid to step out on faith if you really want something. Within four months, this is the first time I had asked the Muslims to give anything. Oh, by the way, at the final call, yes, I did ask you to buy your little chair. That was, a, that was all I took from you. But when it came to getting this, I didn't have it. We had to do it. So in four months, I mean, I, I had the brother sign the contract with a closing date. And then we got busy. And the few of us that were here in our nation, within four months, we raised the money. The place was in disrepair. This that's on here, that's real gold. I had craftsmen come in from Turkey. You know, that, that kind of gold that they put on golden domes. That's the kind of gold that's here. I was going to put jewels all up in here, yeah, but I just didn't have the money. Yeah, why are you going to waste your money? See, but a house dedicated to the worship of God we as humans, there's nothing we can do to say thank you to the Lord of creation. So the only thing we can do to say thank you is do something as big as we can in his name. So the craftsmen came in from Turkey and they went to writing in gold from the Quran, beautiful words. 
We adorned the building. We had to put seats back in the building so you see people's names on the seat in front of you that they paid for that. So you could have a seat today. But we got in debt. Now debt, everybody has debt. But debt is only a problem when you can't manage it. But it's so much better if you owe nobody nothing. And you know the way the enemy got this thing situated. You buy a house, you pay a 30-year mortgage, a 15-year mortgage, he gets his interest all up front. You look and see, how much did I pay on the principal? Hardly nothing. In 30 years, you paid for the house three times. In the Quran, this is called usury. It's forbidden by God. But we don't live in God's world. We live in a world ruled by the enemy of God. So the enemy of God has to make a profit. A profit on you having a baby. You got to pay to bring a baby here. You got to pay for everything you get, then pay to get out of here. They got a death tax. It's a hell of a world. And just to make it in a world like this is a blessing from God. So when we borrowed some money from the bank, even though we paid for the National House, which if you go and look on 4855 Woodlawn, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad built that from the ground up. It cost him $1,250,000 in 1970 dollars. Now, in 2004, you couldn't even approach that building for less than $7 million to $10 million or more. So they say, well, yeah, the mosque is worth that all right, you know, but we need collateral, so let's put the National House up as collateral too, along with the property here. And that wasn't enough. They said, you got to be a personal guarantor. Whatever money you got, we take that too. We're trying to get back the things that poor Muslims pool their dollars to get when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here. Here's a man that took our nickels, dimes, and dollars. We had 5,000 acres of land in Georgia, 10,000 acres of land in Alabama, 20,000 acres in Honduras. We had airplanes, trucks, schools, international trade and commerce, ships coming through the ocean, bringing our products from all over the world. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not interested in building no church. He said, we are a nation of people, and a nation has to have earth in order to be independent. Right now, our mouth is in the white man's kitchen. <laughs> 